Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. We had a painter at our house recently, and the job that we'd asked him to do was to paint the outside of the house. I was somewhat surprised when he told me that it would take about four days, which of course meant four days pay. After the first couple of days, nothing much seemed to be happening. It wasn't that he wasn't there, and it wasn't that he didn't look like he was up and down the ladders, etc. And of course, playing his radio continually, which I don't particularly enjoy. But I wanted the house to be painted, and the gloss paint, the top coat, didn't look like it was going on. And then, there it was. And a really good job he did in fairness, I have to say. You see, most of his time was spent in preparation, scraping, sanding, filling, priming. And really, that is what is going on in Genesis chapter 1. The first 25 verses are preparation for the creation of man. The phrase, after his kind, which occurs 10 times in the first 25 verses, emphasises the unrelatedness of the different living creatures. So when we come to man in verse 26, he is not the latest product of evolution, but he stands unique in God's creation, as this verse tells us, to have dominion over it. When we read this clause at the start of verse 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness, we're immediately impressed with the special place of humanity and the dignity that was attached to him at the very beginning, morally like the creator and unlike the creatures. They were to reproduce after their kind, i.e. to be like themselves, but man was made to be like his God. The idea in image is one of representation. Humanity was created with the stamp of God upon him to be God's representative on earth. To be able to do that, he was also made in the likeness of God. And likeness has the idea of resemblance. C can I say it again? There is a dignity associated with being human, which should govern how we treat our fellow human beings and it should direct our attitude with regard to the sanctity of human life. The intrinsic value of being human has been bestowed by the creator himself. In the creation of man there is therefore relationship, there is representation and there is responsibility and of course more of that later. You may also note that in verse 26, there is a sense of deliberation about it. And God said, let us make. It's not that God was working out what to do, but rather to underline for us that what is described in these verses was a deliberate and purposeful plan. It was neither haphazard nor random. With the creation of humanity, God has put purpose into this creation. The Bible knows nothing of the hopelessness begotten by the myth of evolution. It was Augustine who wrote in the 4th or 5th century, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. How true this is! And the reason for that truth is found in this verse. God has made man in his image and after his likeness.